This story is inspired by real events. According to historic records, on March 4, 1513, three ships sailed from Puerto Rico. They were heading to faraway islands and were led by the famous explorer Juan Ponce de Leon. The goal of the expedition was to search for the legendary Fountain of Youth. It all began in Puerto Rico, when Governor Juan Ponce de Leon gave military support to the chief Gaibana in a war against other tribes. The Spanish soldiers quickly ended the war and restored peace. The grateful chief told Ponce de Leon an ancient legend of his people, a legend about Bimini, a hidden island lost in the sea. According to the legend, in the center of Bimini is the Fountain of Youth. Anyone who drinks from it will enjoy long years of health and youth. The chief also gave him an old map covered with inscriptions in an ancient language. The map showed an uncharted group of islands. The location to search was clear, but the inscriptions were still a mystery to uncover. The captain believed in the legend and began to prepare an expedition. The best scientists and sailors of the new and old worlds volunteered to join his adventure. A total of three ships sailed off, the Santiago, the Santa Maria, and the San Cristobal. Ponce de Leon was sure that the ancient map would lead them to the fountain and bring them fame, wealth, and eternal youth. The voyage to the islands took an entire month. On the 30th day of the journey, the lookout spotted islands up ahead. They were the islands from the map, the expedition, was just one day from its goal. into the ship. The sails were torn apart and the ship slammed into the reefs. The sailors jumped from their bunks and tried to save the ship, but it was too late. I came to my senses on the sandy shore. My memories were gone. I could not even remember my name. But I was alive, and hoped that at least one of my fellow crew members had also escaped. Ponce de Leon also survived the shipwreck. Sea currents brought him to this same island just a bit earlier before my awakening. He located the grotto and made it his temporary shelter. Then he started to act quickly and decisively. After building up the temporary camp, the captain began to explore the island. He named it the Island of Hope. During another trip, he heard distant cannon shots. It was a signal from one of our ships. 
the captain left this note, then hurriedly packed up and sailed toward the sound of the cannon fire. He was in a rush to help his crew. Running quickly, he forgot his spyglass on the other side of the island. If I find it, I will be able to look around the island. This is the cannoneer from the crashed Santa Maria. Left without a boat on this rock, he was dying of hunger. Up on top, he found a nest and tried to grab some eggs, but the cannoneer underestimated the danger of these birds, the harpies. And the harpies pecked him to death. Maybe somebody else survived on Santa Maria. I should go to the crash site. Captain of Santa Maria and his mate are killed. It looks like the killer took them by surprise. But who, who could have done such a thing? And most importantly, why? On the table, there is the Santa Maria's logbook, stained with blood. Apparently, the killer looked into it. I must examine it at once. The storm took the lives of many members of the San Cristobal crew, including the captain. But the ship reached the final destination of the expedition. Instead of the island, the sailors found an impassable chain of rocks and dangerous currents. They called it the B-Mini Belt. After unsuccessful attempts to pass the B-Mini Belt, the ship was badly damaged and in need of urgent repairs. First Mate Fernan, who had become the new leader, decided to stop near one of the large islands. Fernan organized the construction of a temporary camp there in order to find resources to repair the San Cristobal, as well as to search for other survivors who could be on the islands nearby. A few days later, the survivors arrived themselves. Juan Ponce de Leon was accompanied by sailors from the Santa Maria. Once again, the commander encouraged his comrades in the success of the expedition. During the assembly, Fernand showed pieces of copper ore that had been found on the island. If enough copper could be found, it would be possible to repair the San Cristobal and continue the expedition. The crew decided to go in search of copper ore deposits. The next morning, Fernand Delgado and Juan Ponce de Leon as the most experienced explorers left the camp. Juan Ponce de Leon and Fernand Delgado found an ancient copper mine in the depths of the island. The explorers were about to start mining the ore. When a huge beast jumped out of the bushes and rushed to the commander, the conquistadors had never seen such a ferocious predator before. Fernand did not hesitate and struck the animal with a well-aimed shot. His quick response is the only thing that saved Juan Ponce de Leon. With the beast defeated, the friends filled a cart with copper ore and returned to the camp. The sailors were able to use the ore to forge strong patches and reliable tools to repair the San Cristobal. The ship and four small boats were soon fixed and ready to sail. This time, Juan Ponce de Leon decided to act for sure. The commander organized several search parties to study the nearby islands and their weather. Knowledge of the region was to help the sailors make their way through the B-Mini Belt. 
I found a list of places with coordinates where the search parties and the commander himself had gone. If I can determine the coordinates of the island I am currently on, I could draw a map and then figure out where to sail to find Juan Ponce de Leon. Navigator Diego Nunez arrived here to study winds. He was in the middle of his studies when the killer caught up with him. Looks like the first shot only wounded Diego. He tried to escape, but the second bullet killed him. The poor guy didn't even fight back. What kind of monster could do such a thing? The alchemist, Francisco Maurice, came to this island in the course of the expedition by the order of Ponce de Leon. Looks like he was attacked by the crocodiles in this swamp. He was trying to escape from them on a hard Predators bomb. forced the scientist into a trap. He could not leave his hiding place, and the poisonous fumes of the swamp were slowly killing him. The alchemist did manage to discover some potion during his researches. This recipe might come in handy. Engineer Castillo and the ship's doctor Ricardo hope to find some iron to reinforce San Cristobal for passing the B-mini belt. However, they found more ore than expected. Ricardo suggested using these deposits for making giant gunpowder explosives to break through the rocks in the B-mini belt. They immediately went looking for sulfur to prepare enough gunpowder for the bombs. The ship's doctor, Ricardo, was mining sulfur here so that the engineer can prepare fulminating silver for bombs. The killer crept up from behind and drowned the poor man in this fetid lake. The doctor's diary is still here. His notes might help me understand what has happened to the engineer. Engineer Castillo planned to make fulminating silver for bombs using resources from these mines. Unfortunately, his time ran out. The killer caught up with the engineer. But it seems that the killer was also wounded in their fight. Castillo managed to notice where the killer sailed after that. He wrote the direction with his blood on the nearest stone. The travelers found ancient wall carvings in the underwater temple. The symbols and drawings helped them decipher the map that Chief Gaibana had given to Ponce de Leon. The commander and the geographer rejoiced. They could see how to navigate through the Bimini belt, open the sea gate to Bimini Bay, and reach the Fountain of Youth. But they were not destined to leave this place. From the shadows of the temple, the travelers were attacked by a mysterious killer. Geographer Jacob Beliasso died here. The fate of Ponce de Leon is unknown. Perhaps the undercurrents carried away his corpse. The killer took the map and became the only person who knew the safe route to Bimini. He headed to the San Cristobal, the only place he could go from here. My God, what is he going to do with the crew? Hey, 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 hey,
Obolfis wants me to bring him all the pieces of the map of the islands where his civilization lived. If I deliver this to him, he will share the blueprints of the legendary Stormbreaker with me. Legend says that the natives could sail on the Stormbreaker to Beamini Island, where they visited the Fountain of Youth. to convince me to side with him. Fernan had pursued his secret goals from the very beginning of the expedition. He cunningly disguised his intentions, helped the team, and even saved Ponce de Leon from death. But when the commander unraveled the ancient map, Fernan had to unmask himself. He attacked Ponce and the scientist, took the map, and left them to die in the underwater temple. Fernan convinced the San Cristobal crew that the commander and the scientist had died in the traps of the temple. He was able to become the captain of the ship in this way. With the ship under his control, he dealt with everyone who could find the fountain one by one. All these people died at the hands of a fanatic. He was driven by the belief that the secret of the Fountain of Youth would spell disaster for all humanity. Fernan thought that the fountain would destroy Europe the same way it had destroyed the ancient civilization on these islands. Therefore, he swore that no living soul would get their hands on this demonic artifact. He thought he was doing it for the greater good, and that God was helping him, until the engineer managed to injure him in a fight. 
Ferdan had to break his vow and use the ancient map to sail to Bimini through the Sea Gate. With the help of the map, he mastered the secrets of the temple and healed his fatal wound at the fountain. Here is where we met. He thought he could convince me to take his side and help him kill everyone who knew about the fountain. I cannot believe that I have reached my goal. The Fountain of Youth is in front of me. One sip from the fountain was enough for my memory to return. Now I remember everything. I am Captain Juan Ponce de Leon. All this time, I have been following my own footsteps. When I discovered the way to Bimini at the underwater temple, the stealthy killer attacked us and took the map. I was badly wounded. Despite the wound, I managed to escape. I jumped into the water, fleeing from the killer. I lost consciousness in the water, and the currents carried me back to the Island of Hope. The blow to my head was very significant. I woke up not knowing who I was. When I woke up on the Island of Hope, I stumbled upon my own footsteps and followed them. I did not remember that I had already been in these places. This expedition cost many lives, but we found what we were looking for. Still, Fernand's last words kept spinning in my head, causing doubt and concern for the fate of Europe and the world. A man without a dream is not a man. But what if that dream can destroy the whole world and the dreamer himself? The gift of immortality has already destroyed this advanced and prosperous ancient civilization. Can Europe bear the burden of this gift? According to historical records, in July 1521, Juan Ponce de Leon was wounded by a poisoned arrow during the conquest of Florida. As he was dying, he spoke of the mysterious island of Bimini and asked his crew to take him there as soon as possible. He died shortly after that. The mystery of the Fountain of Youth still remains unsolved.